Let's go to that TikTok video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go because I gotta load up on my end. Uh, this TikTok video here of who lacks sex. Let's take a look at this episode, or excuse me, this quick TikTok here, and who's actually lacking sex. What? Who lacks sex speaks about sex. Hungry talks about food. A person who has no money about money. And our oligarchs and bankers talk about morality. What's your quick feedback on that? So in other words, if whatever you're lacking, you're talking about? Yeah, your fears get withdrawn during times of pressure and stress. From what so in I other words, we're talking about money and faith and fatherhood. We're doing a podcast that we're lacking <laughs> faith. I think it's during the hard times. You know, when you're completely under a lot of stress and under a lot of pressure and it, come, it just erupts in the middle of, of an argument. I think that, you know, you can kind of tie that into relationships when you're arguing with your spouse or your partner and money tends to be the, the surrounding factor on why you're arguing or the lack of sex or the uh, incompetent sex that your partner gives you, especially a lot of men out there who are very incompetent when it comes down to knowing how to lay a smack down in the bedroom yeah. because, because of their, uh, their diets and their lifestyles. Um, but that's my perspective. But, you know, listen, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in what you talk about, you be about. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know about this uh, two cents here. Maybe what you flex yeah. is because you lack sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, you're lacking what, what you don't have. So it depends on how you talk about that topic. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. a good Perspective. point. Right? For sure. Because because if you're talking well about it or you're complaining about it, really it helps you understand, okay, that person is one who wants to bless people with this conversation, with his experience with it. Or this guy's just complaining to lay, you know, to lay the blame, to hide the shame. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they don't want to get in the game. Uh, let's go to the next one about how to tell if a girl doesn't like you. Uh, Lex, we're going to definitely need your perspective She's on this. Absolutely. <laughs> how to tell if a girl doesn't like you. Let's take a look at what uh, this video has to say. She's not interested. It's really that simple. If you are trying to contact a woman and you're getting delayed response, when a woman likes you, she will cancel plans. She responds immediately. She becomes available. When she doesn't really like you that much, she's unavailable. It's really that simple. It it's, all makes sense. It's, it's very true. How do you know that's kind of like just baiting positioning? Um, well, so... Because I tried this once, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think a lot of women try to see how they can benefit from a situation. So it's not even just if she likes you. It's just what, how is she benefiting from it. I've had friends where they don't like a man, but they will continue to entertain the man because there's something they're receiving from it. Whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's attention, they'll do it. So, yeah, so she's completely spot on when it comes to if a woman's trying with you, she's interested. I'm not going to say in dating you, but she's yeah. interested in whatever you're offering. It's really that simple. <laughs> <laughs> to all the men out there, just get out of their DMs. Find a hobby. Go to church. Yeah. Make some money. Go to the gym. But what a good point. How, how do you feel about DMs in your IG? I mean, you, you, got a, you got a decent following in your IG. I ignore them. I am not going to find a man on Instagram. I'm letting you know right now. I think that if I... you. I've I've actually had a lot of friends complain about the men that they run into and vice versa. The the mm -hmm. males complain about the women that they uh, encounter. And it's like, well, have you thought about where you're encountering them? Mm -hmm. You know, the clubs, yep. nightlife. Yep. Um, how'd you meet? Oh, Instagram. Yep. How'd you meet Tinder? I'm not, not knocking. I've actually had friends who have marriages out of, mm -hmm. you know, dating apps. But um, we've lost touch with how we interact and in how person. we court. Yeah. 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 And I think that's 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 a the biggest problem right now when it comes to dating. Lack of so court. yeah. Let's talk about how to find a wife. So uh Jordan, there's a video here that we should react to in terms of how to find a wife. I wonder what uh their insight might be. Here we go. I'm single, you're single. What do you say we get married? Well, I'm glad you finally decided on the direct approach. Yeah, well, I'm a businessman at heart. As am I. What's your offer? Single rich male seeks matrimony. Primary residence? Westchester County. Would you be open to considering a secondary residence in Manhattan? Central Park West. South. Done. <laughs> Time spent together? Eight hours, five days a week. Damn. Seven hours, 12 hours weekends. 55 hours aggregate, specifics to be determined later. I'm amenable to that, children. One. Three. Two. Done. <laughs> But one of them has to be a male. I'll see what I can do. Vacation. <laughs> December, Hawaii. June, the vineyard. June, fine, but Hawaii. Nope, the vineyard. Is that a deal breaker for you? I'm afraid so. Me too. Well, we gave it a shot. I'm sure you'll find a better match. Thanks for the time. If 
Nicole, it was that easy. Well, hey, at least they didn't waste around and uh, have kids and go through a divorce and split assets 50-50. That's true. (laughs) What's your thoughts on that? Um, Well, I think I've actually had this conversation with somebody before. Um, A lot of parents send their daughters off to go find a husband in college i don't know if you've wow. ever heard that story yeah like, holy moly in college in college yeah absolutely and if you statistics show like there's there's that that age i'd say 18 to 23 is where you find you know your lifelong partner and if not you're gonna find it later in life but i will say um we we as a society now we do a lot of beating around the bush when it comes to trying to find somebody we date and compatible with um i i don't I've, I've struggled. So I, as I was in a long-term relationship and coming out and getting back into that dating world, it was just like, I don't, I don't know. People have just lost, like I said, I'll go back to courtship and approach like they, they, that's terrible now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, you, <laughs> you know my situation, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. But the audience doesn't know your situation, bro. I just like, I just like having fun with it because we're going to eventually find Milton here, a good woman in his life. All right, and, here. Uh, I, I, we're gonna, I, we're gonna I, have Milton marry an awesome woman of I, God. I created a fi- five-second uh, resume. <laughs> I'm six-two. I like long walks on the treadmill. I'm kind of funny, kind of awkward. Jesus loves me. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to love just as hard. I got good credit. I can afford a ten-piece nuggets from Wendy's, <laughs> which is a come up from McDonald's, um, and a grande instead of a venti from Starbucks. So that hey. is my resume, ladies. Yeah, bro, you're lying on that, bro. You're like, you're not no ten piece. Grande, you're, you're a sushi guy. The grande guy. is smaller than the venti, though. No, I thought I thought uh, the venti is only tough. twenty ounce. No, I think the venti is the largest. That's tough. The, tall, what, the tallest what is the smallest. What he's trying to say, ladies, is that if you like a ten piece McDonald's and you value that and you appreciate it and you're grateful for that, there's much more around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just I just exposed you. Bro. Thanks for the stamp. You uh, you're appreciate welcome. the edification. Um, let's let's go to this next video here. Um, um, on uh, Patrick but David, what the USA needs today, what the USA needs today, uh, from my mentor Patrick but David, because I think a lot of this um, craziness happening in America today is because of just America's trying to say I'm going to do me, and in the process of doing me, we're losing sight of the greatness of what our country is built on, the values and principles of what makes America America. So, uh, what USA needs today is what. understand people who are willing to risk life living without God. Hmm. I, I, I can't understand that life. Because to live a life without God, you think you know it all. I don't think I know it all. To live like with life without God, you think you can do it all on your own. I can do it all on my own. To live a life without God is saying you have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I need help in raising of my kids with good people around me as well because I only have a certain amount of hours with them every day. They go to school. Mm-hmm. To, to live a life today without God, man upstairs, prayer, a community you're a part of, if there's ever been a time in our lifetime, at least you know in the last however many years, to risk living life without God, this is by far the worst season to do that. What's your thoughts on that? What's where, where is your faith? Your your, regardless of what religion people are involved in, to not have a God in your life. How is it having a God in your life? Your faith, big man upstairs, made an impact in your life. You what need, would you be without? You, you, you need to be able to be rooted into something. You need something to fall back on. You you need to understand. And we all need to understand that we all come from source. I feel like we're all little little mini resources on this physical earth, trying to put one big puzzle piece together. And I, I do believe that every single person on this on this earth has a specific gift or if not calling that they're meant to pursue and go after. And I believe that that purpose that you have within you, that gift that you have within you, because God placed that gift within you strategically. A lot of people go out looking for these gifts and exterior things and women and men and money and careers and jobs and just all these, all these distractions. But God placed that gift in the most strategic place possible that you'll be able to find it, but that's the last place we look, and that's literally within you. And the moment that you start spending more time with God, your identity starts to expand, you start literally filling in the gaps, and you start to recognize who you are, what you're meant to become, and what you're meant to do. And that within itself, I do believe it's going to create room for you, it's going to create purpose for you, and at the same time, it's going to be able to create a some form of monetization so that way you can make money off of that, and that way you can also serve the world. Amen. Yeah, my biggest, my biggest thing. Man. Profound, bro. 
hit the nail on the head with that one. <laughs> I cannot follow that one up. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Um, having a faith, having a God in life. Yeah, in life. I think I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off what Milton said. I think um, no matter whether you think it's a higher power, whatever yeah. your belief is, I do think that it is important to remain rooted. Uh, there was a point in my life where um, I left and was just trying to discover myself in college, and I wasn't really focused on my faith. And when I graduated and really was kind of, like I told you, dealing with that depressive phase and whatnot, like part of what helped me kind of find my way back and really start feeling like I was fulfilling my purpose and serving was, you know, finding my way back to my faith. I'm not saying church. I'm saying my faith, you know, however you practice it, whether it's on your own, you spend time with him, just like Milton said, like, I truly think that your life will change. So there shouldn't, you will never find me not, be, not rooted in my faith ever again, because I was, I was a lost soul then. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, Click right here.